The reproductive system, for some unusual reason, is one of the favorite systems for students to get interested in. Don't know why. Well, the human reproduction system, there's a specialization in that males, we make many sperm, while females, they make very few. Why is that? Well, males do, kind of are specialized for having lots and lots of gametes because the chances of any one sperm making it are pretty slim. So we use a whole bunch of them, whereas females, they focus in on quality. And the way that they pull this off is that in males, when we undergo meiosis, or meiosis, we undergo the normal way of doing it and we wind up with four cells. And if you notice, every time you divide the cell, you're getting smaller. But remember, females, when they make an egg, they're trying to provide lots of resources. And with humans, we really do a good job of making our offspring have as much resources as possible. In fact, women don't release their eggs into the ocean. They keep them inside their body to feed them even more resources. And one of the things that they'll do is that when they undergo the first division of meiosis, you'll see instead of having equal cytokinesis, one of the cells gets jacked and it winds up with very little cytoplasm. Basically all it is is a place to put the chromosomes you don't need. And when this cell undergoes meiosis, again you wind up with a wee little nubbin over here. I believe they're called bar bodies. It's just this little dumping ground, these polar, sorry, polar bodies where they just put the chromosomes that they don't need. And that leaves you an egg that's roughly the size of the starting cell. Now let's take a closer look at human uh, uh, female anatomy and we'll go over some of the basic parts. So the ovaries sit here and there and what they do is inside of them they have thousands upon thousands of cells waiting to become eggs. And once a month one of them is given the go signal and that follicle starts to develop and until finally it produces an egg through a process known as ovulation when the egg bursts out. The fallopian tubes are sitting here and they've got little ends that kind of collect the egg. So one month, this fallopian tube will collect an egg. This month, or the next month, that one will. And so the egg comes along the fallopian tubes. Now, if a woman is um, having intercourse with a man and he uh, produces some semen, eventually the sperm will typically fertilize the egg within the fallopian tubes. The fertilized egg will then make its way down to the uterus where that fertilized egg or zygote will embed in the wall of the uterus. And during the course of a woman's normal cycle, she will have thickened that uh, uterine wall with lots of extra blood vessels to help feed that child. Now, once the uh, child starts developing, eventually it's going to have to leave the woman's body. And that's when it has to go through this narrow muscular pathway called the cervix, and then ultimately through the vagina. Earlier, of course, there was um, the man deposited his semen in the vagina and the semen had to make their way through the cervix into the uterus and then randomly pick hopefully the right fallopian tube to enter. Now I mentioned that menstrual cycle. Now I don't want to go into all the details of all the hormones involved but basically it's the 28 day cycle of preparation for an egg, the actual release of the egg and that's an event called ovulation and here what we see is the developing follicle and it develops and then pops out the egg. Then it starts producing some chemicals to help make sure that the uterus stays ready for that egg. And so this diagram here is showing how in preparation the walls of the uterus get thicker and thicker and thicker. But if that egg never gets fertilized, then this corpus luteum, that now used up follicle, it starts to generate the hormones that it were, was releasing, start to drop down, and eventually the woman's body gets rid of the additional lining that it made because she's not pregnant. And that's when you have the menenses, the menstrual flow when she releases that. That's uh, commonly called the period. All right, let's take a look at the male anatomy. Now, it works in many ways similarly. We have gonads, women had an uh, uh, ovary, we have testes. In the testes, we make our sperm. Those get stored in the epididymis where they are stored up until they mature, and then they're released through the vas deferens. And then they go zipping along this long tube. And by the way, if you've ever heard of vasectomy, that's when a guy has that tube snipped and tied closed, thus preventing him from having children. Now, as they pass through, there's a number of other glands, the prostate gland, the seminal vesicle, the Cowper's gland. They all add various chemicals to combine together to form the actual semen, which is a combination of the sperm, 
plus a number of different chemicals such as fructose to help give them uh, food and uh, some uh, alkaline substances to help protect them against the acidity of the woman's in, uh, birth canal. Then ultimately they join together into the urethra. Now men are different from women. We have one tube that both urine passes through and that's our uh, reproductive tract. Women, their urethra is separate from their vagina. Real close to each other, but separate. And then this is the urethra. It's the tube that leads out of the penis to allow the semen to ultimately get into the vagina and find its way to the egg and fertilize the egg. And that's the reproductive system.